need to do something like that. Uh, mute that. There we go. I'm set whenever. Hello and welcome to the third round of the PRD Championship here at the Monaco Grand Prix Heat 2. And uh, today we should see some exciting qualifying after watching a bit of free practice today. It seems as if most of our qualifiers today have gotten a bit closer to joining the pit box. We do have Jaden Thurlow and... Let us start the first flying lap of qualifying. We've got Bullet going for his flying lap now. And th this track's just very special just to race on and to set down a quick lap takes a lot of skill. A lot of skill, a lot of effort. If you end up getting it just slightly wrong, you could end up like Max Verstappen at the beginning of qualifying this morning where he ended up crashing his car into the wall without even setting a time. Here we don't have to worry about this as much because we are in a racing sim we can just reset the car but it does ruin the flow for the weekend so a crash here could affect your pace later on as we see Bullet coming down into the bus stop chicane very neat and tidy. It seems like he's going for a um, relatively tidy banker lap at the moment. Our pole sitter from and race winner from Wednesday's race. Coming down through Piscine, I believe, into Razcas. Coming out of the final corner now. And let's see what time he gets coming across the line. He sets a 119.2 to go into P2. Only a hundredth apart from first and second. That means it's going to be tight. First at the moment is Sinister. Our second place finisher in yesterday's race. Really, really outstanding kind of charge he ended up putting up toward the end of the race unfortunately he ended up picking up damage and was unable to keep the gap to first place first place having driven a tremendously clean race although everyone did do well in the final result we have Scott Meek who didn't happen to be here on Wednesday but he's thrown down a 120 Eight and Mech Zero, who wasn't fourth, he's gone down to fifth. And we've got IGC who set down a 124-1, and a few other runners that haven't set a time. Fiskerton being one of them. He might be on his flying lap now. Did hop the curb a little bit. very cautious on the exit of Ravage. I mean, Raskas. Excuse my French. <laughs> and and go ahead. And this is, in fact, his first time lap. Very mm -hmm. nice looking Ferrari livery, I have to say. Hitting all the right lines through the first sector. Uh, we don't have a best sector up yet, but when we do end up having the capability, I uh, will uh, announce so accordingly as we come down into Portier going into the tunnel. He's oh, made it! He's, in the wall. Oh, he's made a really spectacular crash. That shall end his time lap, surely, but he will go out for another attempt. We've got Guso Noob. Losing it a bit. Coming out of Trebek. He's got the Renault of Bullet following behind. He might hold him up just a bit on his next flying lap. Oh, and he took it wide. He has to stop. Oh. Up, and it's caused a pileup in the final corner. I believe that was Guso and even T. Musa at the time, who is surprisingly in a... Uh, in what appears to be a yellow Aquista car. So, Team Musa having changed cars 
Mech hey. Zero brush the wall. Yeah, Mech Zero's going. He went a little bit wide on the entry, but he managed to recover. I'm not completely sure how his Sector 1 splits are going, but it seems like he's picked up a little bit of pace coming through Mirabeau yeah, he's, into... He's quite a bit off in the first sector, about 1.5 seconds off first. Oof, so he's lost a lot of time in the first sector at the moment. It looks like he's got a car behind him trying to warm up his tires, one of the Ferraris, I'd imagine. I believe that the chicane. yeah I blew through the chicane if we can get a better look not completely sure that could be the Ferrari of no not really just trying to get his tires up to temperature or the Ferrari of Fiskerton both teammates seeming to do pretty well in the championship for the Ferrari team mech zero trying to score some more points for Renault I believe he may not have finished in the Wednesday race. I'm going to have to check our logs for that a little bit later. But he'll be anxious to get some points today as this competition has stacked up quite a bit as quite a few contenders have uh, stepped up the pace. Also got IGC in the manor. He's setting 122 even. His last time was only a few thousands off of that, so great A for consistency at the moment. Stocky ran real, real wide into the hairpin. He went back to pits. <laughs> so we've got Stocky back in the pits. He's trying to exit now, and it seems like we've got Guso Noob coming down the main straight, but he will indeed miss him. He's going to be following the pit line. Went over it a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> vaguely following the pit line going up through Beau Rivage into Messingier now and he's hit the wall and that's definitely going to be back to pits for sure as we got Scott Meek coming down the main straightaway he's going to be going for a lap he set a 128 which is a relatively respectable time around this course but it's not on pace quite as well with the front Mr. runners who were setting the wall on the front stretch oh back in the pit wall again he's back in pit road oof Fiskerton not having the best of qualifying sessions. Sinister has been knocked down into P2 at the moment. Currently riding along board in the Renault car. And he's set a 118.4. We've got Static Energy on pole position. The man who missed his outing last race had to had a uh, quick uh, view of the commentary box, has now uh, set the fastest race lap time. He's lost it coming out of the uh, second part of Racine. And he's going into Razcast now, pretty clean. I believe he could have lost about two oh, or three tenths from that. Out of Sandoval, up to Bureau two car spin, third involved. That was quite the accident coming out of Pit Road. Eesh. It's not what we like to see at all. It looks like Flying Spark is in the pit road, and Fiskerton has yet to set a lap. You need a good qualifying to do anything here, because we all know overtaking on this track is very tough. Very tough indeed. So Fiskerton's definitely going to be wanting to set his uh, first qualifying lap to at least get somewhere up the field so he can make his pit strategy just that much easier crossing the line for his first run now he seems to be doing all right he might have Guso new behind him at the moment who seems to have collected a tiny bit of the wall if our microphones are correct and Ferrari looking ever so stunning. It seems to have a similar livery to Kimi Raikkonen's helmet for this year. With the uh, red... Fine spark is stopped in Mirabu. Okay, he's back to pits. That's interesting aboard. We've got IGC into the wall. He went into the runoff into Mirabu, I believe. And he's going to be coming out with Flying Spark. 
So the two and tenth and eleventh respectively are going to be coming onto track now, hopefully to set their lap. And there's been a big, there's been it sounds like to be a big crash in turn one. It looks like it could have been Team Musa, and that um, oddly colored Renault car. It seems like I'm not sure which team he's driving for at the moment. We'll get some more information after the race, but it, uh, he's driving for. Is that the RCB International team? No, RACB International team. He's driving the number five car. I'm shocked he's still running. He's got quite a bit of damage to his rear wing. He has. He's collected quite a few of the walls on this run alone. And it is quite tricky to drive these cars around the Monaco circuit with the. Especially the cold first lap, you have uh, completely brick cold tires. And uh, the tires on the Renault don't necessarily grip all too well. So it's quite challenging to actually get them up to temperature. It takes about three laps, and you have to drive it pretty aggressively to get some heat into them. So it is taking quite a bit of skill for uh, Timosa to remain on a lap. And that lap, that last lap set was about a 1 in 20.1, which is about 4 tenths slower than his previous time. Fiskerton finally set a time of a 1.19.7 for P6, showing the um, increase in pace from Wednesday to today. Most of the times set on a Wednesday were about in the low 120s. We're now breaking into the 119s for most of the cars. As we've got Bullet into P5, surprisingly, so Wednesday's pole sitter has been knocked off his throne. Uh, no, not really. It's just gone straight on <sighs> in the vault, and wow. Oh, he's collected that wall in the sand of vault, lost a front wing, and he's going to be headed to the pits for sure. Trying to go for that 117 here around the streets of Monaco isn't an easy thing to do in these cars, especially when you only have what it appears to be six minutes remaining in the session. And the, I'm actually kind of shocked at how tight the top about five are, all within the same second. So that's pretty good. So we've got the top five split within a second with Static Energy. The man who is plagued with wheel malfunctions on the Wednesday race. On pole position. Now it's going to take quite a lot from No Not Really to knock him off the throne. No Not Really trailing behind him now in the number five Ferrari, so we have two number five cars here on the same track. <laughs> believe that's a little bit of a oversight of delivery editors, but two number fives nonetheless. And No Not Really is definitely going to be going for the warm-up lap, as it seems that uh, oh, static, static energy... Uh, swim employees back to the pits. Static energy back to the pits. No, not really. Brushes the wall on the front stretch into sand of vault. Hopefully that didn't affect his time too much. He seems to have a little bit of a wobble on the exit to sand of vault. That could be a little bit of damage we might have to keep an eye out for during this lap. Yet... He's definitely got some type of steering damage. He had a bit of a wiggle through uh, Casino Square. He's going down into Mirabeau now. Had a little bit of a lock in the inside left tire as he goes down to Portier. He's carrying a tremendous amount of speed into Sector 2. Let's see he if that... Flying. He is on a flyer. He could take the pole right here down into the chicane. Just don't lock it up. It's the worst thing you can do. Some under-rotation, almost into the wall on the exit of the bus stop. Really twitchy. <laughs> oh, he's definitely on a monstrous lap at the moment. 
He's coming around Razcast now. He's taking a really tight line, almost brushing the wall. He's coming out onto the front straight. Woo! Whoa. I think he's got it here. Maybe. And his no. last lap was a 118.3, so 210 slower. So he must have lost it into turn one. But he's going to go for another attempt. This car is really alive, dancing around. <laughs> car is absolutely on the ragged edge around this circuit very clean into Murray bow here he's locked the front left just a little bit as just the nature of the corner drops away from the front left wheel gonna come down out of portier he almost collects the wall going into the tunnel the sector times are slightly up again going into the chicane Keep it tidy, son. Come on. And he's lost it. He's lost it on the exit of the chicane. And he will have to return to the pits with three minutes to go. Will he be able to get his tires up to temperature in enough time to try and steal the pole? As Sinister has another go. He's gone down into Santivo. He's going up through Bro Rivage as we speak. A little bit of a... Uh pace lap con or warm up lap confusion between no not really and static energy and static energy goes back to the pits Oof! sinister's collected uh, the inside wall of casino he's going into Maribo now but he must have some damage with the amount of energy he put through that front suspension he rides on the curb of the hairpin as we speak he's going through portier about as tidy as no not really He's going to try and see if he can be the last of the late breakers down into the bus stop chicane. And he carries just a little bit more speed than No Not. He lose a little bit of control of the front left. He's through Trebuck, but that didn't seem as fast as he could have gone. He lost a little bit of momentum there. He's going to come around Razkaz now. Static stopped out at pit exit. Oh, there he went back to pits. That was a little confusing, but through uh, no Anthony Nogue's corner down the front stretch for no, not really. Can this be a quick enough lap? Oh, it's, it's just a warm up lap. <laughs> it is a warm up lap. He is trying really hard to get as much energy into those tires as he can so he can go for his flying lap. Now, the trouble is, if he just gets a little bit off here on the warm up section, or even on the second lap, that's his qualifying over. He oh, this will not... is the last lap he can run. There's not enough time. Well, he may be able to get another lap in, but I am not too sure about that at the moment. Sinister is off in the pits. Guso is off in the pits. Bullet is off on the lap. He's trying to improve on his 118.8. So... No, yes. not really is way off. He's overshot a couple corners. He's two seconds off in sector one. And waiting for the sector two time to come to us. He's in the wall out of the chicane. Ooh, that's qualifying done and dusted. We've got bullets still running laps. He's going to see if he can go for a flyer before the end of the qualifying session. We've got Scott Meek trying to improve as well and nobody else out on track so will bullet be able to make it this lap he does have enough time for a second flying lap let's see how much he'll be able to improve by he's going to go around Razkaz now he's carried quite a bit of speed come out a little bit sideways a lot of energy through the tires, and he will not improve. So that ends our qualifying session here. Amazing these times that they're putting down around here. Very, very impressive for our selection of drivers indeed. In a qualifying session where no punches were pulled at all, we've got static energy. On the pole, no, not really behind that. Sinister into P3. Guso Noob into P4. Excuse us one moment. <laughs> Gotta get off the track. We've got Bullet 
off into P5. He did not improve on his qualifying time. We have Fiskerton into 6th position. We have Scott Meek in 7th. He's going to be in his black Renault car trying to get to score some points for the evening. We've got T. Musa in the 8th position for the Renault Sport car. The yellow one with the number 5 on it. We've got Stocky in his beach car. It does look quite quite the beast here on the spectator cam. We've got Mech Zero in the typical Renault colors for this year in 2016. We've got Flying Spark in his own custom livery, which is a relatively, relatively good one indeed. We've got ICG2. He's going to be in the Manor Renault car in the 94. And as for our front runners, we've got Static Energy in his own custom livery. The Pro Line Pack Fan Racing Division, number 13, on the pole today. He's going to be ecstatic because all he has to do for this race is run his own perfect race. Uh, this lap's really, this formation lap's really going to determine, I believe, the start because it depends on how warm your tires are and if you can keep the heat in them. Depends on your start and how you get around that first lap. Sinister's got his Renault car out from a 2006 throwback. He's in the number eight. I'm not completely sure whether or not that belonged to Alonzo or his teammate, but it does look pretty nice indeed. And he's going to be frustrated that he didn't have the pole position that he missed out on by a few tenths on Wednesday. So he's going to be trying to go for some adept redemption here in this race. Guso Noob, he uh, managed to secure fourth place last race. We'll see what he can do this time around. We've got Bullet in fifth. He's going to be trying to make up some points so he can defend his title from Wednesday afternoon. Get all those heat in those tires and we're ready to go. Coming through Raskast to line up the grid. All right, we're right, going. The last corner, odds on the left. I mean, odds uh, on the right, evens on the left. First place will be on the left side, and. All right, you've heard them. We've got odds on the left and evens on the right here on the pit radio, and they're going to be calling the, they're going to be calling the green flag for this race here at the Monaco Grand Prix. All the drivers lined up and ready to go. Going in their boxes now, getting ready for a very crucial start. And all the drivers in position. Everybody good? Yep. Red. Yep. Red. Red. Green. And it's and go, go, go. off. Oh. Good run on second, possibly three wide into one. No, he backs up it there. Oh, there's, oh, a, there's a pile up! Wreck. There is a huge wreck in the turn one! We've got a Renault off, it looks like it's Bullet! We've got Bullet and Guso new! And Flying Spark, he's just making out of it barely alive! Oh! Oh! Well, Bullet must be kicking himself so hard for getting involved in the first lap incident! Goose Noob has definitely got massive damage. I think he took the hardest look of all of them. Just wow. <laughs> it seems like one through eight has gotten away relatively cleanly. And it just seems as if Bullet and a few others just haven't gotten out of the corner. But it seems like we do have a bit of a break in between the front pack and the remaining four behind, it seems like the field seems to be splitting apart right now, but I did hear over Team Radio it may have something to do with a stall, but we're not exactly sure, certain what's going on in terms of the first lap incident. A sinister overshot a couple corners there and lost quite a bit of time to No Not Really, and I think No Not Really just has to stick to uh, static energy, and I think he could maybe get him on a pit stop. Might be able to play the pit strategy game, but we won't know for a while as Sinister does come out of Santivo really Pitting. squiggly. Yeah, he might have damage. I don't know if he made contact with the wall or anything, but he was definitely off pace through the swimming pool section. 
All right, and we've also had a declaration. Uh, it looks like Flying Spark might be going into the pits this lap. He might have collected some type of damage trying to get around the uh, pileup into the first corner, but it looks like Scott Meek has gotten away unscathed. T. Musa as well. Stocky's out of it, but we don't see... Oh, Goosa Noob's in the pits as well, so he must have been collected as well. I think he, that might even be a retirement. Yeah, he retired. So we've got our first retirement of the Grand Prix. Bullets off into P10. He's going to be set, trying to set some blistering laps as he collects a little bit of the wall going up through uh, Santivo. IGC locking up the fronts, tapping the wall, going into Mirabeau. Fiskerton in P8. He's a long way away from anyone at the moment. Uh, Musa got very squirmy coming out of uh, Nobes and onto the front straight away. I don't think he tagged the wall. Oh, no, not yet. He's taken a lot of the curb into Santa Vo. He's getting dangerously close to the walls at the moment. He must be trying to catch up to Scott Meek, who's in the fourth position. He's not too far ahead, in fact. He's only two seconds ahead of T. Musa at the moment into Mirabeau, and um, he's not necessarily gaining any time on him. So, no. this might be something to look out for toward the end. It's definitely a race of patience. Indeed. Here in the streets of Monaco, there aren't too many places to overtake, because we did have a little bit of a lag spike from Static Energy. Still into P1 with his um, first flying lap, uh, well, his last lap being a 119.2. It's the fastest lap of the race so far. And no, not really. Hanging back just a little bit in the dirty air. Both of them getting really close to the wall, and it just seems like a three-car split for first place. So this could be a pit strategy race yet if Sinister can try and close in on his competitors and he's clipped the wall. Wow. You, you got to get every inch out of these cars, and you just got one too many inches. <laughs> <laughs> one too many inches collecting the side of the exit of Santa Vo. Did he scrape the wall again coming out of the casino there? I, I am not sure. We'll see when he makes an attempt at Portier coming up right about now. He's going to go around the corner. It's a little bit of a squiggle. He might not have as much damage to actually put too much of a damper on his race, but he's currently one and a half seconds behind No Not Really. No Not Really being within eight, within a second of static energy. It's going to be a tight fight for the win between static energy and No Not Really. I think Sinister kind of went a little over the top there through Sandoval. Let's see if he can keep it together for the rest of the stint. Well, currently at the moment, we've got the Pacavan Racing Division car, number 13, against the Ferrari. And we'll see who wins out that battle okay. later on in the race. Scott Mink in fourth. That is a very impressive uh, run for him so Pitting far him. in this race, especially for avoiding all of the... Uh, for slap incidents. Considering uh, Guso Noob was actually in the same position around the same stage in the race. We're on lap six here of the 32 lap race. And so far that uh, Renault car seems to be holding up against Team Musa, who's in fifth position. He's just gone wide into Mirabeau and Stocky's following behind him. He's just collected <laughs> a bit of the wall, it sounds like. No, not really. He's just inching a little closer in the braking zone each corner. I don't know if it's enough, but over time it might add up. Surprisingly, we have Bullet off into P7. He's 33. He's a full pit stop behind everyone else in the leading pack. And we have IGC trailing behind him, about two seconds behind, and Max Zero right on his rear wing 
going down into the hairpin. No, not really. Got really close there to uh, static energy, but I think he blew it there in the sand of vault and overshot the corner just a tad bit, but he's still right there on uh, all of his uh, rear diffusers. As we've got our race for eighth place here in the back, we've got IGC holding up Mech Zero, holding up Fiskerton. They seem to all be within one and a half seconds of each other. IGC in that manor car putting in some type of work here in eighth position, but will he be able to hold on to it? Wow, they're so close, so tight. Very tight indeed here from 8th to 10th place, and they don't seem to be gaining any ground. But it seems as if Fiskerton's actually closing up to Mech Zero at the moment, oh, he's he lost, lost it. it! He lost it going up Bell Rivage, too much wheel spin is stay stopped there, okay good. <laughs> uh. A lonely sorry oh, coming from Fiskerton. Mech Zero's off, he was off in the wall. He has lost a lot of time. Or not Mech Zero, or I, IGC is off in the wall. My bad. Yeah, he's come out behind Mech Zero. I guess the pressure was just a little bit too much for the manor driver. Sinister's and right on the tail of the leader. This is a great battle for the lead. I wonder what happened to No Not Really. He's lost quite a bit of time to... No Not Really has gone down into third position. So we missed quite a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Sinister's gone for the charge that he's missed out on on the Wednesday race. Maybe that scrape to the wall might have helped him. Might have helped him just a little bit in pace. He's within six tenths of the leader right now. Sinister, a really cool headed driver. She might be able to hold the lead, but considering this race doesn't shouldn't have any pit stops in it, I'd be surprised if he actually lost the two cars behind him. tight for this top three. Top three are duking it out for the win, and it's lap eight. <laughs> so these three have been together for about eight straight laps. I wonder if the pressure is going to get to one of them eventually. These well, something's th gotta give. The two behind do have a history for cracking under a little bit of pressure. Yo, oh, Sinister's really going for it. He's just scratched the wall down the main straight. Don't take each other out. <laughs> it's only <laughs> lap nine. It's only lap nine, but oh, he's just edging oh so cl much closer to static energy. What do you think's going to happen here? I, I really... Oh, there's lap traffic, too. This could play in Sinister's favor. Or it could play into Static's fa favor. We won't know for a little bit until one of them actually makes the pass. So oh, no, not really practically nudging. Practically nudging Sinister along He's out of Portier. Wow. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really that. signaling IGC to get out of the way. That's a good thing we just got out of the way. Followed blue flags. That's Look how close the drivers get to the walls on this track. It's just almost unbelievable. It's all driver, not much on the car to get around here. Sinister almost tasting the back of Static's rear wing going into Santivo. He's closed up quite a lot on the braking. He's, he's I believe. Make him under braking. He's, he's got way better braking than what uh, Static does. Static seems to have the corner Good. entry covered, so how will this... Really <laughs> <take> the <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is getting... Uh, this is getting <laughs> exciting to watch. Sinister almost collecting all of the walls. No, not really, just staying behind by He's a stretch. There. No, not really is there, and he is waiting for one of these two to make a mistake. I believe he might try and hang back a little. Might actually drop off a few more tents. If oh, oh. that is a hard hit. 
that is no not really cracking under the intense pressure they've been going at all race and it looks like behind them there's some type of race between a Ferrari and a Manicar that might be Fiskerton and IGC but it looks as if no not really might have to go into the pits because that was a pretty large hit into the wall he's for no out. not really but no he's staying out so it, it must not be that bad well it's going to be a one-stop race who knows, maybe got just a pinch lucky, but we're going to have to see through the replay cams as we take a look at the rear of the field at the moment. Team Musa is about 14 in 4 seconds from anyone at the moment. Stocky is trying to see if he can catch up on raw pace alone. He might be able to catch up toward the end of the race. And we have Bullet off in the sixth position. He's going to be trying to catch Stocky intensely. Crash at Portier. There's been a crash at Portier. Oh. Who was that? Oh, it's Scott Meek! Scott oh, Meek is no. in the wall! He had such a good run in fourth going for him. Oh, he's in the wall, and he's going to be passed by Fick Fiskerton, possibly IGC. Oh, that's going to be a hard hit for Scott Meek as IGC spins out right in front of him! The DRS oh. spin and it must be! As wow. Scott Meek takes the exit road. Fiskerton collecting the wall as well. What a turn. Oh, IGC must have some massive damage. He just like lost it on the straightaway. IGC had a DRS spin coming out of the tunnel and lost it. Stocky's coming yeah, around to lap him, I believe. Yeah, he's holding up Stocky. That's not going to help Stocky at all. No, not when he's trying to catch T. Musa ahead. Sinister still. Oh, maybe to the inside. No, fakes it over. Wow. I no, not really. He's definitely easy. got some type of damage there. He's dropped off about two seconds behind the leaders. Yeah, but well, if he can stay put, he could keep a solid third. All right, we are now on board with Sinister. Let's see what he can do into the next few corners. He's definitely got static much into the breaking of Sandoval. I think that's where he's going to make his move. Just look at this car. It's the braking zone. He's almost touching Static's rear wing by the end of them. He's very close on the exit of Razcast, but uh, will... There's a crash in one of the air hairpins at the moment. I believe it could be IGC, but we will not know. Careful, Saki. And then um, Mirabeau. Don't move. still stop down in Mirabeau. I don't know who that is. Ooh. I think that was Flying Spark. We have a great battle here for the first position, and no, not really, losing about a few tenths a lap. What's that? Team Musa's in the pit. Got a lot of accidents here in this middle stint. It looks like IGC is coming down very slowly. He's just blown the chicane. Sinister's all over the rear wing. That. We'll have cars letting them by. Oh, oh, he's within oh. a couple tenths of him. If he can only just get the speed in, it looks like Statics tapped the wall just a little bit. He might be feeling, he might be feeling the pressure of Sinister at the moment. He's going to be hunting for that win that he lost out on, but he's just not close enough to make a move into San Devo. Just gotta get that extra tenth or two, and that's just so hard to find, especially around like a track like this. Uh, here in Monaco, there's not, there's a whole lot of time to be gained, along with a whole lot of risk. It's going to be whether or not Sinister can find a few extra tenths without collecting one of the wall barriers 
here around Monaco. They're very deadly, as we've seen, with No Not Really, who's slowly gaining back a little bit of time. He might be conserving his tires because of the damage, but he is a bit squiggly coming out of Portier. Stocky's done a good job in just avoiding everything and getting up to fourth here. Stocky, the king of accident avoidance here this time around. As we did have a huge stunt come around lap one. It looks like Sinister might be holding Fun back. Spun going down towards Raskat. He's down there. Don't know how long he's going to stay stopped down there. He's backing up the track now. Whew. Fisker to nearly <laughs> collecting him there. That was close. <laughs> it's, it's as close as you can get. You could almost touch him with a razor. Uh, Sinister's lost some time to static. That's not going to play in his favor. And Stocky, surprisingly, has made himself... He's just made it into P4. So somewhere between... The lap battle and the few accidents we had in the rear of the field, it seems as if a few cars have fallen down the order, and they seem to be separated by multiple seconds at a time. We've got Mech Zero seven seconds behind Team Musa, who's about 15 seconds behind Bullet, who's... Definitely a race of survival. 15 seconds behind Stocky. As we've got the battle for first here, you've got No Not Really gaining some time back actually. So he's gained yeah, he's a few tenths. Gotten right back up. He's got a good run out of Antonio Nogues. Could he make an attack? I don't know if he's got enough though doesn't look like it for an attack. Nope. No, he's got, uh, no, not really got squirrely out of Razkaz. He lost about five tenths. So all of that hard work went a little bit down the drain as he did manage to barely catch it. In. Oh! Oh! Sinister. Just getting closer and closer to that rear wing each lap. But he seems to have collected a tad bit of the wall while doing so. We should see whether or not he's uh, he's lost any time in the next few laps, but it looks as if Static is having a hard time keeping up the pace. Yeah, I think Static just needs a little bit of breathing room to kind of relax and be able to start pulling out some good times again, but Sinister, Sinister. is a lap. <laughs> four tenths faster as fast lap Sinister's. About one tenth is needed to make an overtake here, and he's very close on the exit. He doesn't have a good enough run, though. I don't think he can hold off. I wonder if he just has just a pinch more downforce than Static. Which would explain how he's getting oh, he's back to the corner. So oh, he's going into Bo Ravage side by side, but he can't necessarily do it. He avoids the wall just barely. And what a move by Sinister. Shame he couldn't get it completed though, but that just shows how close these two drivers have been for the first 17 laps of the race. So we're past the halfway point. We've got well, Static. We with half the race gone, there's still half the race to go. There's <laughs> <laughs> still definitely half the race to go. We've got Static in the first position, Sinister in the second position, No Not Really in third, Stocky off in fourth. He's done very good for himself this weekend. We've got Bullet in fifth, driving like a mad madman to reclaim every bit of track position he has. We're just past halfway through the race. However, he has claimed a lot of seconds here on Stocky, and he might be able oh. to turn this around. Sinister really clipped the uh, curb there quite aggressively in the swimming pool. Oh. I Got think Sinister is going to be better off staying out an extra lap than Static because he's much quicker. Well, there are no pit stops here at Monaco. 
got T. Musa in 6th and Mech Zero in 7th, Fiskerton in 8th, Flying Spark in 9th, Scott Meek in 10th, IGC in 11th, and we've got Guso Noob retired from the Grand Prix. There really is no pit stops? <laughs> uh, judging from the Wednesday race, it was a no-stop race, so... The drivers oh. more than likely aren't actually going to head in for a pit stop this round. Well, S S Static really needs to keep Sinister behind because I do believe Sinister is much quicker. You just can't can't get by him. But would it be better for Sinister to save his tires and then just go for a move? Take it about five laps from now. Right. Because by that time, Static Energy may have already burned out his tires, and he should be fast enough to make a move into the bus stop chicane coming down the hill as... Sinister Pits, oh my... Sinister's gone into the pits! That's... That is an interesting note indeed. Maybe Sinister didn't have enough fuel. So he might have been running a lighter tank, which can explain his early speed in the race. So, Sinister may or may not have knocked himself out of contention for the win by taking the pit stop, but he that might raises, be able to make it up. That might also raise the question, does Static or No Not Really also have a low fuel load? That is a relatively good question indeed. It seems as if with the pace that Sinister was driving at before, he, in compared to Static, Static, driving about 510 slower in race pace, may have a heavier fuel load. Go on, definitely going to be interested to see how this plays out. But I definitely was not expecting that. Sinister is still able to hold on to third. Yeah, and maybe with no not really damage, he could maybe edge back close to him. A lot of things going on in the rear of the field, but it seems as if No Not Really is actually making back up some time. He's gone from three seconds to two seconds, and he might be able to get something done. Musa is leaving the pit lane. I wonder if that was another unscheduled stop, I believe, because that is his second or third stop. Exiting. Definitely not gone his way in this race. Not at all, as he is exiting the pits currently, No, not really. Oh my lord, he is really catch caught up to, uh, static. No. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He Maybe he was just holding down. back the entire time. Or he put the hammer down. I'll let you buy. Our, static en spot, our static energy has probably yeah. fallen off the pace. Yes, indeed, he has. His last lap was a 20.8. No, not really. was about a second faster. Wow. So, no, not really. Has gained some time back, and he might as well be going for the one stop, as we only have 12 laps remaining in the Grand Prix. We'll see how the race actually pans out, as Sinister has about 16 seconds to make up before he can do anything about the results. So he has 12 laps in 16 seconds. I'm not sure he's gonna make it. But it, that it depends, depends on the front runners. It really depends, because I don't know, no, not really, and Static Energy could also get into it and possibly take each other out, because these drivers are going all for it for the win here. And it seems like they're coming across their first lap vehicle. That could, in fact, be either Mech Zero or Scott Meek. I'm not sure which of the cars that is. I only see vaguely it's a black car. Yep, uh, it's most likely Mech Zero in the Renault. Goodbye. Outside. Flying spark into the barriers off its back. And Sinister with 14 seconds to make up and 11 laps to go. Closing in quite a bit, but... 
And it seems as if Stocky is behind Fiskerton. He may be going to lap him at the moment. Let's see how it goes. He's catching up to the back of him. I'll let Fis you by. Up the hill. Still pretty tight here for the lead. Ooh, Stocky's definitely collected the wall at Portier. You don't know how much damage is on that car, but that could affect his race pace as Bullet is flying up behind him with only a four second gap. So it could be a race here for the fourth position. Definitely Bullet. Definitely not what Stocky wanted to see. Oh, not oh, at Sinister. all. Sinister's crash and Sandoval up to Bull Rivar. He has massively hit the barriers. I don't know if that will require a pit stop, but he definitely hit the wall very hard. This is actually almost an exact repeat of what happened on the Wednesday race. He just seemed to catch up by a lot, and in one of the charges, he just lost it into Sandoval. So, I'm not completely sure how much damage he's put onto that car, but he's gone from about 14 or 13 seconds to 17 seconds with only 10 laps to go. Yeah, not what he wanted to see at all. And Bullet's still quite a ways from Stocky, but that's going to be uh, something to watch unfold. We've currently got the two front runners. No, not really. Almost within a second of static energy, so maybe No, not really was biding his time but he might be affected by the dirty air of static energy with all that damage on his car. These two might be going for the no-stop, and it becomes a battle of attrition at this point. Yeah, I think No Not really just overdrove those tires. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Actually, Sinister hasn't lost any pace. He's uh, he's already gained four seconds back. <laughs> uh, Sinister, it, man, he has got the car to win. He just doesn't have the luck. He's he's a man on a mission. <laughs> Bullets really closed okay. into stopping here, yeah. coming up to uh, Massenet. And as we've got on Team Radio, Stocky is going to be letting bull Bullet by. He's got quite a bit of damage, and he doesn't have the capacity to fight him all too much. Oh, I was, I was looking forward to a great battle after that. But... I, I was as well. No, not really. Slowly drifting back from static as the laps wind down here in Monte Carlo. Yeah, he's just dropped back to about 1.3 seconds. The last lap we were on, he was about 1.2. Now it's gained again. It's kind of dropping back and gaining, but unless he can make something happen soon or break this one-second barrier, I don't believe he's going to be in much contention for the race win. We see Mech Zero catching up to the two. And with about nine laps to go, I doubt any of the front runners are actually pitting. Yeah, I mean, the only way I believe one of them would pit is for damage, but... Uh, even at this point, I'm not sure that they would. Because if they pit, that puts them in definite striking distance for Sinister, who's now closed it down to 13 seconds. I think Sinister could maybe get second, but he would have to pull the drive of his life. Nine laps in 13 seconds. What can he do here with this Renault? Driving like Fernando Alonso himself out there reincarnated. Will he be able to do something with this one-stop strategy? Bullets have gotten by Stocky. Not much of a surprise, but... He has gotten by Stocky, and he is slowly pulling away. Not by much. But he's definitely pulling away. He's just gotten to the one second mark. And Stocky can sit behind and hopefully Bullet makes a mistake. And he has. 
Oh, oh, who's that that just stopped going down to Portier? I think that was... Uh, Flying Spark! Yeah. Flying Spark is right. stuck into the wall. Right in front of the leaders. Static energy is still pulling away quite a bit now from No Not Really. And in update, we have two retirement retirements. IGC2 and... Kuso Noob have both retired from the race. We've got Scott Meek into the pits. He's got damage. Not a great race for Scott Meek at the moment. Fiskerton has been holding his own for quite a while, but he is a few laps down, along with T Musa and Mech Zero, who is in position 6. I believe the only few people that haven't necessarily been lapped, I believe, are Stocky and Bullet. And Mayor. Yeah, Stocky and Bullet, I believe, are the only two that haven't completely been lapped. But they are 30 seconds behind. No, not really. It's just continuing to drift back. And it, I, I think Sinisters can get by. No, not really. At this stage in the race, I believe so, because he's closed the gap down to almost nine seconds. It's unbelievable. That's five seconds in two laps. He, he could challenge maybe for the win. A man on the the man on the charge, sinister, flying through the streets of Monaco like a gold, like the golden bullet he is on a run for the top step of the podium but our question is will he if he makes it will he have enough time to get past the two leaders who are on worn t or were on worn options at this point depends on how quick no not really or sinister can get by no not really because i think that will be the massive determining factor in if he can challenge at all for the win yeah, no, not really is falling quite a ways away from Sinister. Looks like his tires have fallen off the cliff. And uh, Sinister is almost a step away from driving the... Uh, from winning what, probably one of the most intense races of his career, getting hounded by about eight for about 18 laps by Sinister in the first stages of the race. He was also hounded by no, not really... Within the first five, that Sinister got around him after he collected a bit of a wall. Which still begs us the question, <laughs> will he be able to make it? Because from that last lap that I was speaking, he's gained two more seconds. Yeah, wow. He's got something <laughs> special on his car. I don't know. Some some amazing pace here from the Canadian in his number eight Renault. Static's gonna lose some time. He took a huge chunk of sausage curve coming out of the swimming pool. Will Static be able to manage the gap long enough in the last five laps of the race to defend against Sinister? Coming no for not. the charge. Will No Not be able to defend against Sinister? Will No Not really be able to get up the Static? Because Static's made quite a few mistakes over the last two laps. <laughs> that is true. That early lap battle it must have taken a toll on Static, because you're right, he has caught up about 5 tenths, 7 tenths on Static Energy in the closing stages, and it looks like No Not really smells some blood, and he's actually hunting for the win. But um, it looks like Sinister might have a bit of a problem because he's catching up to the back of a lap car Mech Zero. We're going to go over to Team Radio and see how that goes. You better get out of the way, man. Don't ruin the race for a win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, Sinister really. has called it. But he's not close enough to Mech Zero. He's catching him, though. He's seven seconds behind the leaders in the last five laps. I think he can do it. If he can catch up to the back of Mech Zero by the straightaway, he'll definitely be able to pass him without holding him up. And he's on the back of him now, so let's see what can go down. Don't yep, he's blood. right on Mech Zero. Mech Zero's gonna hold him up coming out of Rascast just a little bit. Get out the way, bud. Yes. Yes, please. so Sinister's going for the charge. 
He's only lost a few tents. No, not really. He's getting ever so closer to static, though. I mean, this is going to be quite the battle, and who's to say if No, not really could maybe steal the win, into, steal the win, or get into and cause a massive incident between the two? Yes, indeed. As Static Energy has really dropped off the pace, he's definitely going to be rooting for the last four laps. He's going to try and draw as much speed as he can out of those tires for the win. And uh, if he does, he'll ace the session as Sinister hasn't gained too much time in the last lap. So he might have hit the wall in terms of his tires. His tires might not have the extra performance he needs to gain that extra few seconds in the last four laps. Because he's got about six seconds to go. Which is a closing gap, but an ooh! Static, man. He's giving it all he's got. He is probably a paper's width between him and the wall. He's trying to get all the performance he can out of that wall. <laughs> but we might see Sinister come into play pretty soon. He's got five seconds left. Can he make something happen in the last three laps? Can the lap traffic in front of Static Coming also in play into this? What a turn of events. <laughs> A nail biter to the end of the race. You've got our White Knight no, no. Static. Oh, who is that? Uh... Flying Spark is off into the wall. Okay. Have all the lap cars stay out of it. Let these boys race. No, not really. Is drifting slightly back. Again. Oh no, he's caught up. He's caught up just a little bit. He's within four tenths. And there goes Sinister in the back of our screens now. He's catching up to the leaders. He's got about 4.9 seconds. He's gonna spoil the party. We might have a last lap tussle. Maybe. That would be spectacular. Just maybe. I have a last lap pass in the street to Montclair. That would be spectacular. Yep, he's gotten to the four second barrier. He's. I think he's got it. He's I at think, exact four seconds behind, no, not really at the moment. I think he can get it. Depends on what happens between no, not really and static, but they are so close. Oh, static. No, not really. He's picked up the pace. He must have been. Oh! Oh, oh no! No. Almost touching! He's pushing Static Energy through the corner! This is unbelievable. Static is. He's fending for his life in these final two laps of the race, and there goes Sinister coming out of Portier! Will No Not really make a ridiculous move, is my question. Because he uh, could get he's very. He's not close desperate. enough. Spartan. He could get very Shit. desperate into some of these corners. Just amazing. <laughs> There seems to be an incident between Flying Spark and another car on track. Not completely sure at the moment, but... Two seconds away! I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh, so close. I don't think he's gonna make it. I think he's going to have to hold station for that third place. He's close enough, but unless these two cloud each other in the last lap, it's not going down. Never say never. He's got two and a half seconds in less than a lap to do it. I don't think Rummy. Sinister can pull this off unless uh, these two get together. But this is very possible because No Not Really is all over him. I, With the rate that it's going at this point, unless No Not Really gets really close into Portier, I mean, yes, into Portier, He's not going to be able to catch Static in enough time. And it seems to me at this moment he's not close enough to make a move. No. No. I, I, I call this race done. There's Oh! He's going for the move! Oh! Oh my gosh. Oh! Oh, well, now it's over. <laughs> not close enough by a long shot. We've got Sinister in our rearview mirrors. Wow. Drove like a champion today in that Renault car, 
A race that'll probably go Hound down in history for wall. him. As no, not really. Hounding static energy till the last second of the race. We've got static energy to come in to win the second heat of the Monaco Grand Prix. No, no not, not really, really spinning on the last lap. Wow. And Sinister and P3 after. Watch out, my AI is driving What back. is No Not Really doing? <laughs> this AI is driving backwards, apparently, according Holy to Team shit. Radio. But we've got No Not Really's AI freaking out. We've got Sinister and his grandiose P3. He was hounding first place for a really solid stretch that in the first part, but that pit stop definitely did end up killing him toward the end. That was a spectacular final run, though, by him to close that gap that much after his spin, too. That, that's the, uh, that's the drive, that's the drive of the weekend right there. Bullet got P4. He's going to be at least pleased with himself that he got back up from dead last after the start incident to land himself into the fourth position. Team Musa, I believe, is in fifth position. No, nope, Stocky, Stocky is. Stocky, Stocky retains his fifth position, which is going to be almost dead even with his result in the previous race, although, be it about, it seems to be a second or a few tenths faster than he was on the Wednesday race. Team Musa in the sixth position. Mech Zero in the seventh position. He's a few laps down as well. We've got Fiskerton holding his eighth position. Didn't have too great of a race this time around, but Scott Mink I thought was going to have a fabulous drive, but he ended up getting P9. He was up there in fourth and had quite a good shot at a podium if something happened. Until he lost it into Portier earlier in the session. He just carried just a pinch too much speed and lost the the front end into Portier and just had to uh, take those extra stops and it went downhill from there. Flying Spark, not a good race for him at all today. He's been uh, struggling with the setup of the car. The car just wasn't all that balanced for him this time around. I think and he's in every barrier. <laughs> just about. <laughs> but he'll be looking to improve in the next race, which we've seen him win races before, so it's not too far out of the realm. He's just not acclimated to the streets of Monaco this weekend. We've got IGC, he's retired, and we've got Guso who has retired as well after the first lap incident, and Guso, af Guso after the first lap incident, IGC halfway through the race. Yeah, Goose Noob, man, he, he, I think, could have had a decent drive just that turn one, lap one. He still missed a spectacular race toward the middle. Maybe if he had stayed in, he probably would have been way higher up the field, as a lot of the drivers did have quite a few issues. Too wide, and then, oh, there's a car. Say that was definitely a spectacular damage, race, and it, it makes me want to go and commentate next I've week. Yeah, good job, man. Good job. Good win. That, that was a great race up front. I'm watching you type two guys battle it out for the last few laps. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, that, that's a kind of all last effort move right there on the Marine. I, I was waiting game. for Sinister to catch up. Sin was chopping two seconds a lap off you guys. He, he uh, wasn't for a little while. No, the I, last couple I, laps you were catching up quick. I took I took five seconds because you were navigating traffic, but I took five seconds off the lap, and then I spun it like yeah. the lap right after because I was pushing so fucking hard. Bullet. What a race! What a race! It was definitely spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> definitely spectacular even with the lap one incident that happened in the rear of the field we might have a clip of that for our replays that we do end up getting after the race hopefully but uh yeah 40 seconds to go in the race session and that has been it for this live stream of the third round of the Renault 
3.5 championship headed by PRD over at the Pack Fan Forms. I am your host, Near Fear, and in I'm our commentary. And that's the show. See you guys next time.